College students lose a lot of money when they work during the summer. Which sounds like it can be true, but it is. And it's all due to opportunity costs. In this video, we do the math to show how working in the summer between semesters causes college students to lose 20 to 50 to 80 even $100 an hour or more. In the long run, it could add up to even a lot more than that. So what should they do instead? Go to summer school. Why does it cost students so much to work during the summer instead of taking classes? Because every summer a student works, instead of taking classes, they're pushing back the date when they could get a much bigger paycheck. If a student takes enough classes over the summers to knock a year off their graduation, then they are trading a relatively few summer hours at lower pay for a lot more hours at a much higher pay. For many students, this means attending school for two summers. That means giving up eight months of working at a lower wage for 12 months working at a professional salary. But there are also other considerations. Getting into the job market earlier moves up your raises and allows you to start contributions towards retirement one year earlier, which makes a huge difference at the end of your career. The further out we go in time, the more our analysis relies on assumptions that might not be accurate so we'll start short term and add in the long term, taking those results with a grain of salt. There are also some situations where going to summer school might not be good advice. We'll talk about some of those near the end of the video. At the end of the video, if you know of other aspects to consider, put them in the comments so others can take those into account as well. How much money students lose for every hour they work in the summer depends on their summer pay and their pay after graduation. We will use a spreadsheet to help with the calculations and make it accessible. You can look for the link in the description and you can change the numbers to fit your particular situation to see how much money you might be losing by working summers. Our analysis is based on two U's, the summer school U that graduates a year early and the summer work U that graduates at the typical time. We will call these two U's three-year graduation U and four-year graduation U. Although for some people, it might be four years for early graduation and five years for the original timeline. Here's a diagram of the two graduation tracks for a traditional student. If you're a non-traditional student, you can adapt the math to fit your situation. We will assume that during the regular school year, you're working the same hours at the same pay on either track. That means to calculate the difference in earnings, we only have to look at the difference in the first two summers and in this last year. For the four-year graduation you, you work an extra summer and possibly during the last school year, while three-year graduation you gets an entire year at a professional salary. Let's get down some quantities that are important in our calculations. We'll start with the four possible pay rates. There's your summer hourly pay if you don't attend school, your summer hourly rate if you work while attending school, perhaps part-time, your school year hourly rate if you work during the school year, again, presumably part-time, and your professional salary that you expect your first year in your profession. We also need the number of weekly hours for each of these, the number of hours you work each week in the summer if you don't go to school, the number of hours each week of summer work if you go to summer school, and the number of hours you work each week during the regular school year. Lastly, we need the number of weeks of work for these time periods, for the summer and the regular school year. Let's say we have 14 weeks of work over the summer, which might be on the high end for some students, 15 weeks for each semester, or 30 weeks total over the regular school year. I picked values for these quantities and put them in the spreadsheet. Assuming you move home for the summer and work a higher paying job, I estimated $18 an hour working full-time over the summer, so 40 hours a week, and $14 an hour for the part-time job at 20 hours a week when you attend school during the regular school year or summer school. We will use these values to calculate the total earnings for each track four years after starting school. The four-year graduation U has three summers and one extra school year to earn money. The three-year graduation U has some possible part-time work in the summer while attending school, two summers worth, but also one full year of professional pay. Note that even if you plan on going to graduate school after a four-year degree, this is the first year pay for your profession getting out of school, since we'll assume the cost, earnings, and time for graduate school are the same for either track. I'll pick $60,000 now for your first year professional salary, and we can adjust it later. We also need to calculate the four-year graduation use earnings in your senior year, which we do here. Next, to calculate the hourly rate at which the four-year track is losing money while working instead of going to summer school, we take the difference in earnings for the first two summers and divide it by the difference in all those summer work hours. We get $52 an hour. Now this will change as we change different values. If you don't or can't work 20 hours a week during summer school but only $10 a week, then it drops to $35 an hour. For the rest of the video, 
we'll stick with 15 hours per week when you're working part-time. At 15 hours a week, then the value raises to $42 an hour. If you're planning on getting a master's degree, or you're in a high-paying bachelor field where your first year salary is close to 90 grand, then it changes to $85 an hour. That's $85 an hour you are losing every hour you're working over the summer. If you're in a low-paying field and starting at 45 grand, and you can't work over the summer at all, then the amount of extra money you would earn going to summer school is an extra $13 an hour. Maybe that isn't enough to motivate you, but on the other hand, if you're only earning 45 grand your first year, then you might want to try and get all the money you can. Plus, the advantages you get by going into the workforce early might be more beneficial to you. Let's look at those. As mentioned earlier, getting into the workforce early allows you to get your raises earlier. So you not only get an extra year of professional pay, but your second year of work is the four-year track's first year. And presumably, you'll be getting paid more since you have more experience. And you'll get paid more each year after that. Assuming that you both retire in 40 years, we can calculate how much more money you earn, assuming your raise is 3% a year. But those future dollars don't buy as much because of inflation. We could do a careful analysis to account for inflation, since the extra money a few years down the road hasn't lost much value, but way down the road it has lost a lot of value. To simplify this, we will instead just take the total difference and cut it in half. Contributing those dollars to the total puts our dollars lost by going to summer school at $75 an hour. And that's at a starting salary of $45,000 and working 10 hours a week over the summer. If your salary is twice that, then it jumps to $187 an hour. Let's look at $60,000 for a beginning salary and 15 hours a week and use those values for the rest of the video so we have more typical values. Those values give us $135 an hour that we're losing each hour we work over the summer. Now what about investing for retirement? If you start investing one year earlier toward retirement, that can make a huge impact on the amount you have to live off of in retirement. And that is assuming you decide to retire at the same age no matter which track you follow. Let's say you invest 10% of your gross income and get an average return of 9%, which is pretty conservative. And since we aren't factoring in taxes, we'll stay on the conservative side. Then the larger amount the three-year graduation track gets is about the difference between the 40th and 39th year of growth. Since you aren't using this money until retirement, all of this money has lost the same value due to inflation, so we will divide by three to get a ballpark estimate of the value for today's dollars. Adding that into the total difference raises the amount per hour lost by working in the summer to $254 an hour. That is quite a lot. If you have to take out loans to go to school, you might need to take out extra money to attend summer school and pay a little more in interest, but that extra in interest will be a lot less than the extra earnings in the vast majority of situations. You can do the interest calculations for your specific situation to see how it affects your numbers. As mentioned earlier, there are some other things to consider when weighing the summer school option. If you have an opportunity to do a good internship in your field of study over the summer, then the experience and the networking is probably worth it to be a competitive job candidate or to strengthen your application to grad school. There are also some fields where experience is vital to being a competitive candidate. For example, in theater fields, job candidates want to know how many productions you've been a part of. So speeding to graduation in a way that reduces the number of productions you participate in might not make you a viable candidate for jobs when you hit the field. I know a lot of students enjoy the break from school over the summer, but they may not have realized how much money that break costs them. Once they realize it, that break may not be as inviting. Take the advice of many students facing that last year of college. Many would have wished they had gone to summer school and finally been done with school rather than facing another year of college. Our analysis has shown that it can pay big to move the professional paychecks up. So consider your situation using our spreadsheets below and think about strategies to get into your field quicker since it could be greatly beneficial to you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share our videos. Be sure to follow Math the World on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for your support.